Welcome to the 209 Headlines Podcast. I'm Frankie Tovar. I'm Angelina Martin. It's time for news from the Central Valley. The date is April 6, 2018. It's been a long week for myself and Angelina Martin. We've been busy covering for Eddie Ruiz. He's on vacation, so we've been doing some sports coverage. But also, Angelina Martin, she had a special podcast interview with Josh Harder on Wednesday, the congressional candidate for the California 10 district seat. Uh, I don't correct. know if I said that correctly That's or not. Correct. But how did you feel about that interview, Angelina? Oh, I thought it was fun. You know, it's been something that we were talking about for a while doing those long form interviews. And honestly, Josh was a great person to have as our first one, because as you saw, if you listen to the podcast, he's very charismatic, very well spoken. So I thought it went really well. And I can't wait to get more candidates on the podcast and more just people from the 209 that people might want to hear those long form interviews with. I think we are going to be working on getting Republican candidate Ted Howes on the podcast next week. So if you're into politics and if you're a Republican, you want to stick around for that because he's a fun guy to talk to. Yeah, interviews, we'll be doing uh, many more of those as we move forward. But the congressional race is what we'll be focusing on first. You mentioned Ted Howes. The the end goal is to get Jeff Denham in here in studio and on the microphone yeah. and see what he has to say. We would love to have our congressman in the studio. And I know our listeners would love to hear what he had to say. Um, and I, Apart from the uh, podcast, we had Studio 209. I went to the Monster Truck Show. That was fun. You could catch that online. Uh, and then the weather. It's been kind of turning on and off with the sun and then the rain and some cool winds. Uh, it's been really sporadic. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, on Easter, I was sweating my butt off on the golf course, and now it looks like it's going to be rain all weekend. So really one extreme to the other. Yeah, I had to pull my jackets back out from the back of the closet. And then uh, what else happened this week that's non-headline related? Oh, yeah. Angelina Martin went for a tumble when she was supposed to go for a run. Okay, this oh. is totally not newsworthy. No one cares. But yeah, I biffed it while I was jogging. <laughs> and uh, if you're a 90s kid, you know what biff means. That means I ate it hard. I got a big scrape. I tripped over a piece of sidewalk sticking up. I promise I didn't trip over my own feet. But I'm recovering. Um, I'm all bandaged up. So I made it into the studio to record today. I, I had a very terrible injury and I persevered and pushed through for you guys. Well, I'm happy you made it. I'm happy you're here. I would not want to read these headlines alone. Um, and I know that wasn't very newsworthy. I just wanted to throw it out there and tease you a little bit because I thought it was funny. Yeah, I wish I had it on videotape. It was pretty funny. Anyway, we'll get back into the headlines right now. Actually, not back because we haven't been there yet, but we'll get into the headlines right now. We have a block of headlines that have to do with community fun, maybe some odd news. And Angelina Martin, you have the first headline, so let's hear it. Yeah, we're starting it off with a really feel-good story out of the Oakdale Leader. This story was by Teresa Hammond. Oakdale seniors' hand hugs go viral. Oakdale resident Joanne Parker is spreading joy throughout the community with a simple gesture gesture, excuse me, she has dubbed the hand hug. Joanne first began using the hand hug as a way to connect with her husband of 67 years, Bill Parker, who was diagnosed with Parkinson's several years back. The hand hug has become their go-to form of affection as his condition has worsened, making things like real hugs extremely difficult. So now Joanna has made it her mission to add on to Oakdale's notoriety as the cowboy capital of the world, hoping that it can become the smiling capital of the world as well. How cute. That's cute. I know. I smiled when I read that. And it sounds like she's making people all over Oakdale smile. She said she introduces it to people at the grocery store, around town, and even at the gym she and her husband used to frequent together before his condition got so bad that he can't make to the gym with her anymore. So now she kind of tries to spread that good cheer uh, with people that she works out with. And she said, if I'm speaking with someone, I just say, I'm starting something new in Oakdale. Would you like to see it? And she said that they always say yes. So a hand hug. Um, yeah, let's talk about a hand hug. How can you describe that? What does a hand hug look so, like? So we're going to pretend like we're shaking hands. Okay. But we're going to hold the hand. And right. then we're going to bring our other hand. So it's a double handshake. Yeah, I'm really all up in For the microphone For people who here. can't see, we're, this is an audio <laughs> podcast. Angelina and I are shaking hands right now. We're hand hugging. <laughs> okay, we're done. And it looks... Let go. Oh, let go of your hand? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't make it feel you uncomfortable. <laughs> I apologize for that. It looks like an old-timey handshake. Yeah, it's just like a double-handed handshake kind it's of. It's like you're watching the movies from like maybe the 50s. And yeah. And there's two guys who see each other. And yeah. Shaking. Number one hand hugging tip: You really want to feel the warmth and um, smiles just exude from your body as you hold the other person's hand. Okay. And so the headline says that this is going viral. Uh, so she's hand hugging people through the internet. What's going on here? I think I think we could have come up with a little bit of a better <laughs> headline because I don't know if I would say that um, this is viral. But of course, we know what Teresa was trying to say that it's kind of taking the Oakdale, o Oakdale life, community by life, storm, not yeah. the interwebs. Yes. 
Yes. Because usually if someone says a handshake is viral, I don't want to touch their hand. Yeah. And who? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want to get yeah. sick. Yeah. I totally get what you're saying. But, but, you know, if I see Joanne Parker, I will give her a hand hug. Give her a hand. Yeah. Um, I'll have to look give at her, her picture hug. on the uh, Oakdale Leader website to see exactly what she looks like. Oh, I called I her Joanna to... at one point, but she's Joanne. Joanne. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Joanne, right, props on. to you. Let's move on to the next headline. Uh, this one has to do with dairy producers, but it's not about the actual production of the product. It's about royalty. That's right. We're calling all would-be princesses, dairy princesses, that is. The local dairy industry is now accepting applications from young women who are interested in competing for the District 6 Dairy Princess Crown. Man. Obviously, people listening to this podcast are from the area. They realize what a big honor this is. It is a big deal. Dairy princesses all day. Now, these are the requirements for the competition. You must be between 17 and 21 years old at the date of the competition. You must be unmarried and you must have a dairy background, meaning that your family either owns a dairy or owned a dairy or works in the dairy industry in some way. Uh, the winners will represent District 6 and the California dairy industry as a whole by appearing at schools fairs, parades, and, and much more. Uh, last year's winner was Michaela Toast of Newman. So she'll be having to, uh, she'll have to re relinquish her crown this year for whoever wins. Um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of girls, women, who will be applying for this. And the deadline uh, to enter is May 11th, and the actual event will be held on June 14th at the uh, Our Lady of Assumption Church in Turlock. I'm very familiar with that church, actually. Yeah. I've attended that several times, yes. Have you ever met a dairy princess? I've met a dairy princess. We've interviewed dairy princesses yeah. over the years from Studio 2 and 9 and the different uh, coverage we do for the Turlock Journal and, and other publications. And, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've grown up with dairy princesses. Um so you know that because I've I, I actually uh, met Michaela a few months ago at an event and she oh, was just you? yeah she was just a treat you know she was just so nice and just so well spoken and really representing this uh, dairy district well and she knows a lot about dairy let me tell you like you could ask that girl anything about dairy and she could answer it was she all dressed up in like the princess garden yeah she yep she was wearing her crown she was at actually Cunningham Elementary School in oh. Turlock doing a little dairy presentation for their ag day mm -hmm. and so yeah she had her crown on the kids were like so happy to see her and it's like a real princess here in here in the Central Valley so another tradition is rodeo queens and stuff like that and you know some yeah. rodeo queens I know some as well what is the difference between a rodeo queen and a dairy princess in terms of like what they wear and stuff? I'm trying to think right now, but I can't really nail it down. I'm trying to. Um, I mean, a rodeo queen, they wear cow like the a cow cowboy cowgirl getup. Uh -huh. You know, they a lot a lot of leather, a lot of like uh, I the dairy prince or the the rodeo princess I knew. She would wear a lot of like tight leather outfits, and they had like vests and stuff. I know it was like with the fringe and stuff. So very just like cow cowgirl chic, and then I think dairy princesses just. Are they more formal? More formal, yeah. So almost like a festa yeah. queen or princess mm -hmm. yeah. for all those Portuguese listeners out there. They know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, absolutely. I don't know how to segue into this next headline because it doesn't really have anything to do with dairy princesses. But if you like baby animals, get excited because the Stanislaus Wildlife Care Center is planning their baby animal shower. So if you don't know, the Stanislaus Wildlife Care Center rescues over 2,000 injured and orphaned animals each year. And a majority of those are little babies that are saved in the summer. So just like a mother preparing to care for a newborn, the Wildlife Center hosts an annual baby shower in the spring to collect items and funding to help take care of the many coyotes, foxes, squirrels, and baby birds that need help. All babies. They get a lot of babies in the summer. It's a big deal. You like saying that word, don't you? Babies. Yeah. yeah. I like to call baby animals babies because it's just so cute. Like, oh, look at a little baby. So, yeah, baby animals. Uh, typically, the Wildlife Center is in need of volunteers and donations, but there are plenty of other items they accept to aid in the raising of baby animals, like paper towels, blankets, liquid laundry soap to wash the little babies, gloves, and play pens. Uh, so if you want to help out some baby animals, little babies, I'm going to keep saying babies, the Stanislaus Wildlife Care Center Baby Animal Shower will take place from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday, April 14th at the center, located inside Fox Grove Fishing Access at 1220 Gear Road in Houston. Do you have any experience raising baby animals? Mm, kind of. Well, you had Hunter, your puppy, well, right? Yeah, my dog. puppy, but um, my childhood friend growing up actually rescued two newborn kittens in her backyard when we were kids, and so we would have to bottle feed them like every hour, and you have to like, 
this is weird, but you have to like wipe their bottoms with a wet paper towel because really? to make them go to the bathroom because the mama cat like licks their butt oh, to make them go to the bathroom. Okay. Yeah. So fostering kittens is hard work, but I have done it when I was younger. Yeah. I have some experience as well. Uh, I grew up with a lot of chickens in my backyard. My dad raised chickens. And so, oh my gosh, whenever chicks are born, it's like a huge batch. You get 50 to a hundred chicks if you have multiple birds and it was a feat. It yeah. wasn't. It wasn't easy to take care of these birds. Medicine, uh, hygiene, upkeep, pin upkeep, all that good stuff. So, hey, kudos to everybody out here at the Wildlife Center for for making this an event to bring the community out to help them help these baby animals. Yeah, I did want to say one thing. Um, I wrote about this baby animal shower a couple years ago, and the director of the center told me that they get a lot of people bringing in baby animals that they find um, themselves in the, in the spring. And a lot of the times, those animals don't need to brought in the be brought in. The best thing you, that you can do for like a baby rabbit or you know any type of baby animal that's wild, if you see it, if it's not injured, leave it where it is because its mother is likely around. And uh, yeah, they don't want you disrupting the the nature cycle. I was just gonna say that probably injury would be the only yeah, reason to injured. bring one in, right? Yes. Otherwise, uh, you're taking that animal out of its environment. Yeah. All right, time to switch gears. We're out of that uh, block of headlines and into a new one, the police log block, because there were a lot of people in the area up to no good this past week. Um, in Oakdale specifically, there were two men who were arrested on the morning of Saturday, March 31st. They were caught in the act of stealing horses. Is this 2018 or is this like 1850s? What is going on? This is Oakdale. Oh, good point. <laughs> <laughs> so these would be horse thieves. Um, you know, they were uh, brought to the attention of the Oakdale police after the, the police department received a call about a suspicious vehicle loading horses in the 1000 block of Post Road at around 2 a.m. And, uh, you know, the names of these throwback criminals, Colton Hayes and Dustin O'Daniel, age 28 and 23, respectively, both from Oakdale. They were arrested on felony theft charges and the horses were returned to their owner. So. I'm sorry, Dustin O'Daniel. That is an outlaw name if Colton I Hayes. ever heard one. Colton Hayes and Dustin O'Daniel. Yeah. The outlaws like stick them up. Oakdale. I'm going to steal your horses. I don't know. I yeah. don't even know if that's appropriate to say. So, I mean, my question is what were they going to do with these horses? Obviously, either they're probably going to sell them. Yeah, but we're, is there a black market for horses in the area? Uh, uh, people don't know if a horse is stolen or not. You could put it on Craigslist and sell it the next day. I don't know. I just, seem, I just think it would be really easy right? to... Pinpoint those people. Yeah, it probably would, but uh, criminals aren't the smartest people, <laughs> so I Not wouldn't put anything all. past them. Um, criminals aren't the smartest people. A woman in series wasn't the smartest person. Or last, the classiest. Or the classiest on Thursday. So I'm gonna try to. Okay, I'm gonna try to get through this headline without, without laughing. laughing. It's a little silly. <laughs> okay. Uh, this this article comes from the series Courier. It was written by Jeff Benziger. I'm sure he was cracking up while writing this one too. Woman arrested for exposing breasts to traffic. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, Sheila. Series resident Sheila Dominguez, age 43, was arrested Thursday morning after she was seen pulling up her shirt and exposing her breasts to motorists while standing in traffic in the 1800 block of Richland Avenue. Officer Jerry Podvin was the lucky uh, officer who, at the time, was responding to a different call when he saw Dominguez standing in the southbound lanes as she fondled her breasts in front of cars. Podvin pulled over and approached Dominguez, who appeared upset and began yelling obscenities at him. She said she was recently released from jail and was angry with someone and expressed sexually explicit thoughts. We've all been there, right? Uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to make, make Sheila feel a little better. <laughs> she was arrested, of course, for indecent exposure. And I guess she screamed profanities all the way, way to the jail facility. During booking, Dominguez was resistive and verbally combative with correctional staff. She was having a bad day. I have at least two jokes in my brain, but I'm going to refrain no, from gonna, saying them because, no. you know, I don't want to get on the wrong side of this. Yeah. But um, obviously, you know, <laughs> who knows what the underlying issues there were, maybe some kind of mental yeah. health issues. Um, hopefully she gets the help that she needs or, you know, hopefully yeah, the aside, person right? she was angry with uh, makes amends so she doesn't have to show everyone her breasts again uh it's sad to say but i've actually witnessed something similar to this before interlock here uh, a man though i was at a gas station pumping gas with my cousin and i noticed there was a man outside of the corner store in a wheelchair and he was exposing himself to people who walked by it's a very common occurrence mm -hmm. 
Surprisingly. I called Sadly. the cops. <laughs> you did? I was disgusted. <laughs> I said, I said, 911, there's a man out here showing himself to me, and I don't want to see what he's showing. <laughs> Come get him right now. Did they respond quickly? Oh, we left before. Oh. I don't know. Okay. I was so disgusted, I couldn't even wait to see what, what the resolution of that was. Hopefully, you didn't tie up the Turlock Police Services, Frankie. I don't think I did, but the next headline did, or at least the people who perpetrated the crimes of the next headline did, because reckless drivers tied up Turlock Police Services pretty much all night, Saturday, March 31st. Um, unusually busy for Turlock PD, and we already know that their kind of forces are spread thin as it is, but... Man, we're talking 75 cars with traffic violations, reckless driving, and we're not talking about California stops. We're talking about burnouts. That's right. This happened in the night of March 31st, as I said, uh, around midnight, I believe. Cops were called because there were 75 cars doing burnouts on Atlanta Court, and this ended in the parking lot of Turlock Regal Cinemas. <laughs> um, <laughs> Angie's laughing over there. <laughs> I'm, I'm sad I didn't get to see it. <laughs> so cops were called again uh, just before midnight to Atlanta Court where cars were doing uh, donuts, they're burning out. Once the cops arrived, all the vehicles dispersed. But guess what? They didn't leave town. They went to Turlock Regal Cinemas over there on West Main. Cops had to go over there, break them up again, and the group seeming, seemingly excuse me, left town after that, after they were confronted, and they drove northbound on Highway 99. But then Turlock PD got another call and were advised that the vehicles were actually returning back to Atlanta Court, the original source of the call in the first place. Um, then they disperse after being confronted a third time. It sounds like a sideshow to me. They're very brazen. Like after being talked to by the cops once, I'd like be crying, getting back in my car, like, oh my God, I'm going to get arrested. I'm assuming that they had strength in numbers. 75, yeah, 75 cars. Five, that's, dude, that's why I'm laughing. Cause it's just like, that is an insane amount of cars. I've never seen anything like that in Turlock. And I'm just so Neither mad I missed I. it. And where's Atlanta court? I'm not even familiar with I that. I don't know, but these guys are crazy. I wonder um, what kind of cars they had. If they were nice cars, muscle cars, or what was going on. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what kind of cars they were. But um, you should never drive any kind of car drunk like the man in our next headline did. So this is another story from the series Courier written by Jeff Benziger. He writes a lot of stories. Props to Jeff. A lot of stories and a lot of crime. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's just really on it with his research or if there's just a lot of crazy stuff going on in series. Oh, yeah, I think so. So uh, this series, <laughs> the series crime headline, drunken man arrested before he could pick up niece from school. So it's just what it sounds like. Uh, 25-year-old series resident Jesse Perea was supposed to pick up his niece from her elementary school Thursday morning, but his own arrest put a damper on those plans, thankfully. At 10.55 a.m., Perea was passed out in a car parked in the middle of the street on Lunar Drive when he was approached by officers. He was woken up and arrested after he registered a 0.23% blood alcohol content, which is nearly three times the legal limit. Perea said he drank at a friend's house in Houston that morning and then drove to Ceres where he ate food in his car before napping before he was scheduled to pick up his niece at school. So, I mean, luckily these officers... You know, I mean, who wouldn't see a parked car in the middle of the street? But luckily, these officers did see the parked car, um, apprehended Perea, and he was unable to drive his niece in the car while he was drunk because that could have ended terribly. And all this happened at 10.55 a.m. in the morning? Yeah, dude. He went and got hammered at 10 a.m. and then went to pick up his little niece. And that's so sad because that's not even his own child. That's his his sibling's child, you know, that's put trust in him to go pick up their kid from school. Oh, and his brother or sister is not happy with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of that episode of This Is Us. I don't know I, if you've seen I, it. No, I don't watch but that But yeah, show. the brother, um, he's an alcoholic and he gets in the car and he doesn't know, but his little niece is in the back seat, and so he gets pulled over and gets a DUI. It's like the same exact thing almost. Hmm. All right, we'll move on to our next headline. <laughs> Another headline in, involving drunk driving and an, an elementary school, and it also comes out of series, surprise, surprise, also written by Jeff Benziger. Um, a 40-year-old Luz Loera Esparza of Keys was arrested on the evening of Monday, March 26th, after she led a police officer on a pursuit that began at La Rosa Elementary School. This all happened when Officer Mike Vieira witnessed a woman open her door and vomit while parked before driving off and hitting the curb twice in the process. She was at an elementary school. She opened her door and vomited. Not very classy either. Uh, the driver, she, she fled at speeds of 45 miles per hour and was finally stopped and apprehended in front of the gate located at the Ceres River Bluff Park entrance. It is not known at this moment what substance Laura Esparza was under the influence of, but it was not alcohol. She was given field sobriety tests, and it came out negative for alcohol, so... 
maybe some other drug or, or something. Uh, but she was booked for misdemeanor DUI and failure to yield to an officer. Um, clearly not in the right state of mind to uh, be driving or be following directions from an officer. I didn't know there was such thing as a misdemeanor DUI. Neither did I. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that to up later. To be honest with you. Yeah. But um, yeah, so not really sure what she was on, but on something she shouldn't have been in an area she shouldn't have been. And then she was doing things she shouldn't have been doing. So um, she was arrested as she should have been. Cool. It's a lot of should have been's in, in that sentence. I was yeah. trying to make it all make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I wasn't even listening to you while you talked. I was looking oh, at yeah. my notes. <laughs> That's all right. Don't worry about it. Um, so, you know, normally at this time of the show, we would uh, introduce loud Eddie Ruiz for the sports blast. Unfortunately, he is on vacation. He's in Mexico. Unfortunately for us, fortunately for him. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he's happy not having to come in here in the morning. Yeah. And I'm sure he's even happier spending time with his family in the lovely Mexico weather. Yes. Um, but he will be back tomorrow to watch UFC 223. Uh, if I had to do with <laughs> Angelina shaking her head. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I had to mention it because I'm so psyched about it. Well, not so much psyched about the card anymore because Conor McGregor came in and ruined the whole thing. You can read more about that. A national outlets we won't go into it here instead we're going to go into the story of the day we have a new format that we're trying out with the show we blasted through all those headlines that we just uh, spoke about right now and we're going to save the best for last although best might be a relative term uh there was a big story that happened in turlock on saturday again busy night and it really shook a lot of people in this community yeah i mean as a woman i can say this is everyone's worst fear um i'm sure men Men have fears pertaining to this as well, but I mean, it's every woman's worst fear for, for sure. Women, yeah. Right? Yeah. This headline written by Saber Stafford of the Turlock Journal suspect kidnaps woman from downtown Turlock. A 21 year old woman was carjacked, kidnapped, and sexually assaulted after a night out in downtown Turlock in the early morning hours of Saturday, March 31st. It is believed that the suspect, Renee Preciado Trujillo, age 34, approached the victim at around 1 a.m. in the 200 block of West Main Street and entered the vehicle before forcing her to drive to several locations out of town of Turlock, that is. Uh, the driver was finally told to stop in an unpopulated area of Merced County where the sexual assault took place, according to Turlock PD. Yeah, and if you don't know uh, the 200 block of Main Street in Turlock, that's near the Utter Place, the Grand Crew, um, all the bars that really... All the hot spots. Yeah, that um, people frequent on a weekend in Turlock, so this is really scary. But luckily, the woman was able to put up a fight, and she escaped sometime during the during the ordeal, uh, she was able to run to a nearby house where the residents contacted the Merced County Sheriff's Department, who then contacted Turlock Police Department at 1019 a.m. to inform them that someone was kidnapped from Turlock. Trujillo was seen getting into another vehicle and leaving, and that description of the vehicle allowed officers to locate and arrest him sometime later. He's been arrested on charges of carjacking, kidnapping with the intent of sexual assault, sexual penetration, attempted oral copulation, and battery causing great bodily injury. He'll remain in custody in lieu of a $2 million bail, and he has a court appearance scheduled for April 9th. Anyone with information about this incident is asked to contact the Turlock PD's tip line at 668-5550, extension 6780. And you can visit the Turlock Journal, uh, our Facebook page or Instagram page, turlockjournal.com, to see a picture of this guy. Maybe that will help jog your memory if you've seen him around or have any information on that night of what happened. What a loser, man. Uh, and a lot... Of reaction from the community online a lot of comments uh 564 shares on facebook um dozens of comments i saw a comment from somebody i actually know she said she went to school with him and that he was always a pervert in high school so it seems that this kind of uh carried on with him later in life yeah and i think uh rachel johnson who commented on our facebook on the Turlock journal facebook page about the story she said so scary love our downtown and the community vibe in turlock this is a reminder that although it feels and seems safe there are evil people lurking this young woman's life is forever impacted how terribly sad i think she kind of communicated a lot about how i feel about this Turlock feels like a very safe place, but it's important to remember it can happen to anyone, anywhere. And I really wanted to point out another Facebook comment that I felt like I wanted to respond to. Um, it, it said, what's a 21 year old female doing out alone at 1 a.m.? Unless she just got out of work, she sh still should not be alone. Walking um, with a group is always a great way, obviously, to keep yourself safe. But it's not this girl's fault. We it's so sad that she's we driving live in her car. 
And she gets carjacked. It's not her fault. Yeah. Well, she was walking to her car. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. Um, okay. And as she was getting into the car, this man that forced her into the car. That makes more sense than her driving and him just busting in. Yeah. But I mean, we can't, going back to the comment, you can't blame a 21-year-old female for walking to the bar, from the bar to her car. It's so sad that we live in a world where... I can't walk safely anywhere. Like I can't go anywhere alone. And if I do, it's my fault because I was walking alone. No, it's the rapist's fault. It's um, the culture of our country. It's a lot of things need to change. And it's not this girl's fault that she was walking alone. What's what's even crazier, as you mentioned, is uh, so many people in that area during these times, during Friday, Saturday nights, it's downtown Turlock. The downtown uh, nightlife scene has really exploded over the past years. I've been down in that area at that time with you plenty of times with the groups, you know, down at the bars doing karaoke for at other place or just hanging out at Grand Cru or dancing at uh, Red Brick. Um, and to think that something like this is being perpetrated right in that really general and familiar familiar area, excuse me, is uh, is really unsettling. Yeah, I've definitely walked to my car alone before in that exact area. So I'm. I mean, I shouldn't have been doing doing that in the first place. But like I said, sometimes we're going to have to walk to our cars yeah. alone. It's sad that we can't. It's life. But um, but as you mentioned, this is actually, uh, it might be a rare occurrence for that area of town in Turlock, but it's not a rare occurrence in California. I have some numbers from the California Coalition Against Sexual Assault. These numbers were uh, compiled for the 2011-2012 year. That's the most recent numbers they have. An estimated 2 million female victims of rape in California. That is a lot. Uh, and then you bump that number up to 5.6 million uh, victims of sexual violence that don't include rape. That is a lot of people, a lot of females, let's be more specific, that have to deal with this ugly, ugly uh, truth, I guess. And if you take it to the national scale, nearly one in f- uh, five women, that's 22 million women, have been raped at some point in their lives. So very scary, but I guess there are ways to minimize Um, being assaulted right yeah we got some facebook comments asking for some tips uh, to kind of help prevent these types of things from happening so according to WikiHow, they have a lot of good info on a lot of stuff if you guys are ever looking for tips but WikiHow says the four best ways to stay stay safe while walking at night are to walk with a purpose so don't be on your phone don't be don't make yourself an easy target you know Look straight ahead. Uh, keep your eyes focused on where you're going. Head on a swivel. Yeah, exactly. Don't don't be unsuspecting. Like be vigilant. Basically, like always expect something to happen to you, and it might help it not. Don't be aloof. Yeah. So number two, uh, take press take necessary precautions. Um, I have pepper spray on my keychain. Um, you could carry a whistle with you. I mean, that's like not really going to help get anyone off of you, but it will definitely make some noise and help alert people to where you are if something does happen to you. Or some people go the the CCW route. They get their concealed carry permit and keep a gun on them, which is, you know, a great way to protect yourself. Or if you want a weapon, a knife. Yeah. You brass, per, or no, those are illegal. Yeah, I was no like, brass, brass knuckles. knuckles. <laughs> we do not advocate using brass knuckles. Well, I Please do. do <laughs> yeah, don't use brass knuckles. No, I was thinking because I like to carry my keys mm. in my fist and like protrude them out from in between my fingers kind of like a so i could punch with my keys sticking out do you pretend like you're wolverine too yeah basically i become a miniature female wolverine and don't mess with me okay but that's another good tip <laughs> number three from wiki how avoid suspicious or dark areas that's kind of self-explanatory and then number four is ensure your own safety so like we said you know obviously sometimes you're gonna have to walk alone it's not your fault but if you can walk with a friend let people know your plans know where you're going so that if anything happens to you they know the last place you were seen who you were with uh, and they can report that to police and hopefully help find you but god forbid nothing happens to any of our listeners because it's a crazy world out there and we want you guys to stay safe Absolutely. And uh, obviously, as this case moves forward, we will bring you updates when he appears in court, uh, maybe when a sentence gets handed down. If any other revelations involving uh, this individual or the crime comes to light, we will be uh, here with the updates for you. So, man, like I said, crazy week. I wasn't lying in the intro, Angelina. This has been a crazy week. No, yeah. We talked about breasts. We talked about drunk drivers, drunk drivers, talked about a kidnapping uh, but we also had some lighthearted stories too. Yeah, the hand, hand hugs. hugs. The hand hugs. Dairy princesses. Yeah. Wildlife babies, baby wildlife. Babies. As soon as I saw that, I said, Angelina is going to want to read that. She loves animals. Duh. So you're welcome for that. Thank you. 
<laughs> Just and pass me all the animal stories. You're welcome to all the listeners out there. I hope you had a nice time listening to these news headlines. I hope these headlines were, were stories that you cared about that were important to you. If they weren't, let us know. If they were, let us know. If there's a story out there you want us to cover or types of stories that you want us to cover, leave a comment. Send us a message. We want to know. You can find us on uh, Instagram. You can find us on Facebook at 2 and I Magazine. You can find us on on Facebook at 2 and 9 Headlines as well. You can find us on YouTube at the Studio 2 and 9 channel. And you can go and visit us on our website, uh, 2 and 9headlinescom There's a lot of places that you can find us. And SoundCloud. Oh, SoundCloud and the iTunes store like, as well. I was like, did you say iTunes? See, there's so many places I, I often forget. But SoundCloud and iTunes, go there, download the podcast, follow us. You can get all the regular updates. Um, we will soon be on all the websites for MNC. We're talking uh, Turlock Journal, Oakdale Leader, Manteca Bulletin, Sears Courier, Riverbank News, and the Escalon Times. We're rolling out new websites, a new redesign, and a 209 Headlines podcast is going to be part of that. And while you're at it, you should also subscribe to those newspapers because there's a ton of talented writers who bring you stories from crime to, commun- to uh, excuse me, community news and everything in between on a weekly basis. Angelina being one of those one of those writers. Yeah. I am. Nothing to add to that? No, I don't want to toot my own horn. But Dude, come on, do it. everyone other than me is also really good. Like Sabra and Jeff, we read a lot of their stories. Sabra but and there's Jeff so many more. are the two non-headlines podcast <laughs> champions. Uh, we should do a tally mark to see how many stories of each person we've read because they are, without a doubt, the top two Yeah, well, crime is, always, crime is always fun to Everybody read on the podcast. The crime, right? Yeah. So again, one more reminder. Follow us and subscribe to us on all of our platforms, SoundCloud, iTunes. Uh, we're on YouTube at Studio 209, Facebook, Instagram. Are we on Twitter? No. No. Well, we, 209 we, Magazine is. Yeah, on 209 Magazine. We're there. You can find Angelina Martin on Twitter, though. You can find me on Instagram more so. And uh, we encourage you to comment and give us more feedback, as I said. I'm not going to say the third time. I think two times of repeating all that is enough. So we're going to end this podcast out this week. Uh, and we'll be bringing you updates about future interviews and future episodes. So and, and until next week, I'm Frankie Tovar. I'm Angelina Martin. Have a good day.